All right. Hello, everybody. This is Judy Jam, May 6, 2019. And um, it's in the afternoon. And we have a small little group here. So this is going to be fun. Mm, we're going to spend more time discussing things. So um, I'm going to start with you, Karen. Okay. There we go. All right. Hi. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in Toastmasters and I've been uh, going as often as I can. I've, I've done my 10 speeches. So I'm a competent communicator, very excited. And so I really want to use that playground to work on the, the talks that I'm developing. And I love the world of wellness and um, I, I'm listening very closely to you about how to translate my crunchy granola woo-woo into corporate speak so that I can get in front of the audience. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, right now, um, sp speaking is um, a, a really good place of speaking is, and, and how a lot of entrepreneurs use it, is to promote their business and enroll people into whatever it is they're doing. Okay. Like, for instance, I did a speech uh, for a Toastmaster district where I don't get paid. Well, I actually did it because I thought I'd have my book out. But afterwards, I took all the merchandise I had and I sold all of it, okay? Made good money. And also, I'll make more money on that um, as I enroll people into um, all the other things I'm doing. So they become a part of my universe, right? Yeah. So um, when you um, speak for free, um, um, it is an incredibly, um, sh it should be looked at as a marketing tool. So I'm feeling like you have, um, and you, you do a lot of different things. And I think this thing now that you're teaching voiceover work and you have, you have a workshop and what city are you in again? I forgot. I'm close to Miami in South Florida. That, South Florida. Okay. So, um, um, there's, um, you could get giving a free talk on, um, voiceover and getting gigs and how to do that. Right. I see. And, I and then I would do use your storytelling to create compelling stories about your students. And this is the use that we call the credibility story. Okay. And the credibility story is, is that. Here was this, um, oh, here's Lynette Charity here. Okay, great. I'll use Lynette Charity as my, <laughs> as my credibility story. Oh, oh great. Okay, okay so, so if I was used to Lynette Charity as my uh, story, I would say um, here's someone who I met in Toastmasters. She's working Toastmasters. She's telling stories. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we started to work with her. I started to work with her. Next thing you know, she's third place international conference. Next thing you know, she's getting paid uh, corporate gigs. Next thing you know, she has a message you never thought she would have about a physician's suicide. Next thing you know, she's doing stand up in clubs. And now she's been invited to the Moth Grand Slam to tell a story. Um, and she just did a TED. TEDx talk that was just videotape, which she's going to use to promote herself even more. So, wow. so yeah, so here's, um, you know, so when, if I told the story, I would probably start with um, the fight that we had when I told her that she had to talk about the painful elements of her life. She said, no, and I hate you, and I'm out. Oops. <laughs> She said, so I would, you know, pump up the, the beginning of the story that we were off to the rockiest part. I'm, I quit this class and she walked out like a diva. <laughs> right, Lynette? Am I exaggerating it? No. no, no. <laughs> because, that, wow. Lynette, okay. So you have a person who's doing things and going off their gut and you know, it's not headed towards a direction of, of, of commercial, commercial work. And then in any cre credibility story, you have a person who's 
not doing well, storming out, I don't want to deal with this, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then when you enter in the story, you tell what you did, right? And that's, your, that's the way to give a speech nice. using the story. So you come in and let's say, you know, in my case, it was with Lynette, I don't, you don't mind if we talk, you're thrilled anybody talks about you. So <laughs> at your age, you're just thrilled you're being talked about. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm just going to talk about her. So what I, so then if I was telling the story to an audience that I wanted to woo, I would say, so, you know, I did really discovered, we started working together and discovered that she had a tremendously dramatic life story. She's overcome the, a lot of hardships of uh, poverty, um, um, childhood tragedy and um, racism. Mm -hmm. And, and it was really difficult to look those things in the eye because, you know, as painful events are, but she learned how compelling that is to telling the story. Mm -hmm. And we started to work together. Next thing you know, blah, 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 blah. So these cred credibility stories are always a story about somebody else and you come into their lives mm -hmm. and you from working with you, you take them to success. So, um, you know, do you have some stories, Karen, like you've developed, like somebody like that? I, I'm think my brain is worrying right now. I'm thinking, you know, which stories from my clients could I use? And there's a couple that are coming right into my head. You have to ask me. But like who? Tell me like who. Um, the, um, there was a, I did a, a live workshop at the end of last year for it's called voiceover 101 for people who just were drawn to it and one of the students she was um an older lady i think uh, maybe late 70s early 80s maybe mm -hmm. and i started talking about audiobooks and that it was really accessible no matter where you were in your career no matter what your age was uh, because it's about telling a story and any human being has told a story <laughs> Uh, and she came up to me afterwards and she challenged me and I was like, she said, I, you know, I'm, I'm too old and what is this audiobook thing? And I don't know tech and I can't do this. And I was like, uh, yes, you can. 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 That was my answer to every single objection. And so I went to her home and I helped her set up a home professional studio and I trained her on how to do audiobook work on the, the biggest audiobook uh, marketplace on the planet, which is called ACX.com. It's owned by Amazon and Audible. And she's off to the races. She just finished her first audiobook on stress reduction. And the author loves her and it's out in the world for sale. And she's over the moon. She's launched her voiceover career. Something did she make, did she make any money? Yes, she gets paid. Yeah. Audio oh, well, that's the most important part. Next <laughs> thing you know, she has a paying gig and yeah. more than <laughs> made up, you know, the affordable amount, I, I, I uh, paid her. Let me tell you the good elements of that, that story. Okay. The good elements of that story is that you voice the concerns of the audience using her voice. Because okay. she said, I can't do this. I'm yeah. too old. I've never Terrible done it. Tech. I'm not very Terrible. technical. Mm -hmm. da, yeah. da, da. Uh. And, um, and I said, yeah, that's why, <laughs> you know. Hire me. Well, I don't have a lot of money. Yeah. Well, I don't charge a lot. Yeah, that's exactly true. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. Yes. And then, you know, and I, I gave, you know, I did this, I did that. We worked, we talked, we developed her thing. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. All right. Um, um, so, so Karen, um, you know, and that story, and they worked. And then she, I would just make it a little more like um, detailed, the success part then. Okay, so, but the concerns, acting out, her, her acting out her concerns was, is, is, is like gold. Okay. And so then, um, and then you go, and now she's, um, she's, blah 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 you know a lot of times i do what i do in a credibility story is that i will go okay so we work together don't go into the details we work together yeah you know? and guess what she just made like triple what she paid me 
you know, to record, <laughs> yeah. to record an audio book. She's well on her way. The author loves her. She's now getting other people wanting, because once you break in, bam, there you are. You're the, you know, you can be a go-to person, right? So yeah. let me tell you what I did for her. Okay. And um, then that launches you into your content. Ah, okay. Right? Okay, so yeah. that story launches you into your content. And you go, so to do all, let me just tell you the things that you need. First of all, you have to have number one. And you make it though, but you know, the, the last one you need, nobody does this alone. Right. Including me, right? I mean, I have coaches, I have mentors. Yeah, I, we, yes, we yeah. all do. We all do. Yeah. You don't want to talk about who mentors you because then they'll go like, hey, I want to study with you. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Okay. Yeah, don't mention, no, we all, have, we, you know, nobody does this alone. Oh, nobody. Okay. Because you try and save money and you end up buying the wrong Kim and getting the wrong things, doing it wrong, blah, blah, blah. Nobody does this alone. Right? Yeah. And matter of fact, and then you give them an email to send you something. Yeah. Okay, you get you give them an email to send you something, right? You're gonna send them a PDF on here's the okay. best mics or something. Okay, so yeah, something to, to a value but to them. Then you so. get their emails. So yeah. you send so this is what I did at Toastmasters. I did okay, everybody email me. Take out your phones and I wait. Take out your phones um, because I want to give you um, um, formulas that I'm going to use today to show you how to make things funnier. Wow. And you're going to want these. So they email me. I come home, I've got 200 emails, um, and I just put an autoresponder on that email. I see. So oh, the autoresponder I set up before I go to the gig has a link to a PDF. They download it. How much does that cost me? nothing you know yeah okay so that's really good I sold books to them they love my speech now I have their emails yeah. so today I'm going to email them and go hey here's something else I think another really good resource I'm not going to hit them up with any anything for money program or class or here's okay. like a webinar you can watch or here's this or I want to show you this thing or here's something I did or here's another good thing okay please keep in touch with me. Let me know how your career is going. And if you need help, you know, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So you, you touch them again with something free. It's like, I'm not, yeah. Cause they're waiting for you to go, Oh yeah. She took my email. Yeah. And now yeah. she's going to like, now, um, now for 5,000 bucks, she'll talk to yeah, me. Yeah. She like, wants to, you know, wants money from me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. Now, here's something else for you. I'm going to give you a real good discount on the message of you. So speaking to enroll people really works well wow. when done with these kind of credibility stories. Okay. That's so great. And how often do you sort of reach out and stay connected to your tribe? Like how often well, I, I offer, you know, webinars every two weeks. So I'll always send, here's a free webinar, but Actually. embedded in the webinar is, is a cell. So, oh, wow. so at the end of the webinars is like, Hey, come join us yeah. and let us help you write your thing or whatever it is. And, uh, and there it is. So, and I need to get permission from whoever I'm going to use as my credibility story. I'm guessing say, Hey, can I talk about what we did or no, that? If you I don't, don't need to, you don't need to mention her name. name. Okay. No, you know, so she's 80. Just imagine what you know, talking to people, just imagine what you could do. You know, I mean, my God. Yeah. It's very exciting. You know, it's like, so that's what you should be focusing your speaking on because yeah. that will get you your performance, you know, you know, get you off doing your performance thing, okay. but you'll make so much more money at it than, yeah, than absolutely. a lot of people because you have, you have a product now. So okay. speaking to promote products or services. Wow. That's so helpful. Because I, but trusting your intuition, that's my big one and stress reduction. That's my other one. And I, I don't seem to put, you can even put that in if, if yeah. it ends up within 
the goal is I'm good. Now you could gather actors. Actors will come out for like the opening of anything. <laughs> actors, here's money you could make from your pajamas. Yeah, and that's how I saw the course. Two a.m. Yeah, in your from your pajamas. No makeup. Yeah, and I'm going to give a workshop, a free little workshop on it, a talk on it. Just give it yeah. a be an hour. An hour. Okay, great. And get some, you know, but don't give away the bank. Always go right. like, well, you know, to really dip, you know, you know, you need feedback. Feedback is, you know, crucial because, and I would always put something like this in, you know, because if you do it wrong and you show an agent, they'll look at you once, they'll never look at you again. You've labeled yourself as an amateur. That's, I can tell that story. I, I blew a connection to one of the biggest agents in Los Angeles my first week there because I thought I was ready. Not that's ready. another story to tell. Oh, boy, that was embarrassing. That's a, that's a great story because the sto uh, stories in speaking always start with, like, your setup, which is, you know, by the way, everybody will get a chance to do it. You will all get a chance, but one chance. And if you blow it, you probably won't get a second chance. Right, not with those people. Yeah. Right, with yeah. those people. That's it. So, you know, and that's why I always get coaching before I get. So it's a subliminal message. Got anyway. It. So helpful. Isn't that great? So oh, great. Thank that's you, the best Judy. advice I've ever given you. And you already got a customer here. Lynette said she's going to show up. Hey, yay. I'm excited. I'm ready. Right. Every, I love to help to others. <laughs> love to help authors make their audiobooks. Super fun. She's an anesthesiologist. So what she'll do is she'll put something, someone to sleep, and then she'll listen to your podcast. Yeah, it's doing fine. We blow the place up. Oh, that's right. Oh, well. Oxygen. All right. We're going to get to you, Lynette, um, in a little bit, because uh, I think it'll be very helpful to go through the speech that you're writing, and I'm going to show people it, and we'll work a little more on it. Hey, Rich. Uh, I'm, oh, Jesus. Uh, we're going to seem like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I'm driving now, and I, I actually, I've uh, been kind of uh, away from your course for a while. I saw the jam while I was out and about. I just had a root canal. Um, and uh, I just I dropped in to lurk and listen to what's going on. <laughs> I had a root canal. It's, it gets worse and worse. I'm on my way to my divorce settlement. And <laughs> my wife's sitting next to me, so I hope not. <laughs> oh, good. That was a joke. OK. <laughs> All right. So but, uh, yeah. yeah uh, uh, nice to see you again. Uh, we met yeah, we haven't see seen, yeah, we haven't seen each other in a while, have we? Where did we yeah. meet? It was a Washington, D.C. comedy writers group you came to visit, and I met you there. You don't have to remember me. Oh, that's right. Okay. So here it is. I gave a pitch there. Everybody needs coaching. Look, here's Rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should have so, been to, uh, so uh, yeah. We're, yeah. we're also in the middle of a move to New York, so I'll have plenty of stories to tell in a couple of weeks, but right now I'm just here to listen. All right. Are you, are you in New York? I'm doing a comedy workshop. We're, we're in Maryland still. What? We're in Maryland. Oh, you're in Maryland. Well, this yeah. Saturday in, at Gotham Comedy Club, I'm doing an all-day comedy workshop. Uh, well, we'll be down here, so oh, well. uh, catch you up on next time. Next time. Next time. Well, nice to see you. Why don't okay. you let your wife drive the car? Is that like you can talk? <laughs> you want more info? She had Indian food and it makes her tired and she's... Uh, you got a freaking root canal. Root canal Indian food. I'm not... I don't mind driving. <laughs> a good driver. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, this is the oddest Judy Jam I've ever had. Just want you to know that. <laughs> It's just freaking odd. All right. But next time you'll see a lot of boxes in the background. Okay. Can't wait to see boxes. Um, okay. Well, you just chime in because we're going to do some fun stuff with Lynette now. Okay. Lynette. I didn't know I was going to be put on the spot. I would just, I just wanted to see what was going on. <laughs> well, here, let's do, let's do um, something fun with you. Okay. Because uh, we had um, Annabelle was here. Um, I think I'm going to have to like chime in at 6 p.m. 
today because I think I, I effed up. Oh. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. I was, really, I was really glad that you effed up because I couldn't make the second time tonight because of Toastmasters. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll send, a, I'll send a note that I effed up and um, send it out. Oh, this is but meanwhile, while we're here, we'll just make this a shorter one. But yeah. what, what I would do is, um, okay, let me just go here. Okay, so let's just go here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So we'll go to uh, this. Is this it? No, that's not it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so Lynette, um, just for the hell of it, and people are here, let's see what the beginning sounds like to this. Because we were just, she's doing a, um, The Moth, which is a storytelling venue. And it's main stage uh, moth. It's a big deal. So uh, they want her to talk about her malpractice suit as a doctor, a physician. So let's hear it. We're going to start. Matter of fact, Karen will give you some coaching on what, what, how we're going to start. But um, let's start right here. What if, okay, start right there, Lynette. Can you see it? Yes, I see it. You want me to just read it? Yeah, read it. What if everything you had built for yourself, your reputation, your career, your sanity, was taken away from you? It happened to me with a knock on the door. The year was 2000. And I thought it odd that someone knocked on the door in the middle of the day rather than use the doorbell. I answered the door to see a man in a suit. Hello, may I help you, I said, perplexed. Are you Dr. Lynette Charity, he said. Yes, I am, I said. This is for you, he said as he held out a sealed white envelope. I'm excited. Have I won Publishers Clearinghouse? You have been served, he said, turning and walking away. I stood at the door and watched him walk down the street. You have been served. What does that mean, I thought. I opened the envelope and inside was a very official looking document that said, Lynette D. Charity, MD, defendant versus JS and the Commonwealth of Virginia plaintiff. I was being served for medical mal malpractice. Do you want to keep going? Uh, yeah. One of the worst nightmares for a physician a physician can face is being sued for medical malpractice. Okay. 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 What's that noise? What's that back? Sorry, sorry. Who's that? Oh, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Um, okay. So, um, <clears throat> uh, so anyway. Uh, any thoughts, Karen? Yes, I have some thoughts. So, uh, you have a wonderful voice, a wonderful speaking voice, and I would love to hear you use a little bit more of that in the first sentence or two, because that's what's going to grab us. Mm -hmm. You have so much time. You can pose it like an amazing question. I'm going to give you a line reading, but I want you, what you would make it your own. It'd be something like, what if everything you had built for yourself, take your time because this needs to land. You know what you're going to say, but your audience does not. Your mm -hmm. reputation, your career, your sanity. I mean, you can sort of act out those words even a little bit. It was taken away from you. It happened to me with a knock. And you can even be more physical at the door. It's, it's a little bit more theater because I know you have that in you. And that's going to make me riveted. Try, just try that sentence with that note. I think it's a great note. Go ahead, Lynette. What if everything you had built for yourself, your reputation, your career, your sanity was taken away from you? Was, let's make it ripped. What about ripped? Dramatic, yeah. Yeah. Was ripped away from you. It happened to me with a knock on my door. Yeah. 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 Very dramatic. Very good. You know, um, um, at the beginning of uh, when we speak, we were, uh, Lynette had um, quite a challenge where she had to do an hour new speech and the very next day do a TEDx talk, a brand new TEDx talk. 
And so it was like, holy shit. Um, but we, we had a talk about, um, about the beginning of a speech. She made me cry. Did I make you cry? You're such a baby. <laughs> such a big baby. Yeah, I was a little harsh, but that's why she loves me. Tough love. I'll always tell you the truth. <laughs> no, I, but we were talking, and it's very important as a speaker, because sometimes when you get on stage, you know, you might deal with it. Uh, a, a microphone or there's a distraction or there's a PowerPoint you want to get started. And the important thing when you give a speech is, you know, when you grab the mic or you have it on, you never look at the floor. You, you memorize the first five minutes exactly and you deliver it with total eye contact with the audience. And if you have a camera, that camera is um, is there, the camera is there, and the camera is a person in the audience. So the camera can be like someone, you can even give it like, oh, that's gonna, uh, that's gonna be my best friend. So you can always go like, like, you know what I mean, right? So you can like kind of go around and around, look at the camera, uh-huh, and have it be a person in the audience because the person watching the video needs that eye contact needs your eyes right so anyway so um um the beginning is super important and i love your note about that and then we'll move on the other thing that we we talked about in 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 writing this story which we're in the process of writing we've just written the beginning is um lynette had information here about um about um, uh, doing harm to a patient is not a planned event. We want our procedures to go perfectly every time, but this is not a perfect world. I had placed 1,000 of IVs in, um, in, in, over my, in my over 40 years of practicing medicine, but once when I took three attempts to start an IV and patient threatened to sue me for pain and suffering. Okay, so what I had to ask here, we haven't worked on this yet, was, we never give information to the audience. Everything is in a scene, which means when we tell a story, everything is in a location. So how different the read on this would be if she thought this while opening the scene at malpractice. What? I, I go, but I place thousands of IVs and, and I, I've been in practice 40 years. What? And I'm being sued? I mean, yeah, I had a mistake. Like sometimes, you know, things don't go right. Like sometimes I took three attempts to an IV and someone did threaten to sue me, but, but, but this now? So can you hear the difference in that? And of course we'll rewrite it, but we never just give information on a story. This is like, where are you, where are you telling this? Maybe when your malpractice lawyer comes, there's a scene between you and him where you tell him the information that needs to be done and, and then we hear it. So this is very important that in so many, especially Toastmasters, I think, I see is like, and then I did this and then I did this. And it's just extensively giving information rather than in a scene with either you and yourself at a moment at the door, opening an envelope and seeing that someone is really threatened everything you've done your whole life um, or it's with another person but it's never just information anybody want to comment on that or how, Judy how do you tell uh, is there some is there such a thing as too many stories like do you know have to know when to space them or how long can they go on is it okay no there are no no rules on that. Okay. I saw Mike Bag Baglia. I'm not saying his name. B Baglia? Mike Baglia. <laughs> Mike Baglia. Mike Baglia. Mike Baglia was a stand-up comic who now has gone to long-form storytelling. Okay. And I saw him here at a 1,500-seat theater that he sold out for two nights. And it was all about um, deciding to have a baby. That was what the story was. But the story started off, and it was very interesting the way he did it, because he would start off like, I'm sitting on 
you know, a couch with my wife and she says, I'm thinking about wanting a baby, right? And then he goes off on the different kind of couches he's had in his life. And he went off on a 10 minute routine, stand up essentially about the couch you have when you're, you know, college, <laughs> you know, that you got that still smells, been on the street with dog urine all over it. And he talks about the kind of couches in this progress of becoming, you know, responsible person. So, um, and then he comes back to that moment. So, um, so this whole thing of taking a little side route and uh, jumping out of your story, jumping back in, um, is, is highly practiced right now. And especially if you're going back to childhood, you, a grown person should never get on stage and go, you know, when I was six years old, because it's like, what, you're friggin', you're even past menopause. What are you talking about being six? I mean, you're talking about something so dated, right? So what we're doing, Lynette's thing, because um, it's important to hear about her past, is like her thinking about being on the stand and, and fighting for respect reminds her of when she had to fight for respect when she was a child. So it's an emotional trigger that gets you back to the past. So there are no rules on how long or what. I mean, you should read David Sedaris's story in The New Yorker about his father's dying. Okay. Hysterical and brilliant. <laughs> And uh, I have a link to it. I can send it to you. Send me. Oh, yeah. I'll send it to you. Anyway. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, Rich has lived. He's, he's out of the car now. He still has teeth. So, okay. Jessica. Uh, so, wait. Lynette, you're saying something. What are you, what are you saying? Wait. Uh, unmute yourself. No, no, no. I was uh, uh, just thinking about Rich and his uh, root canal. I was waiting for him to drool on one side of his mouth. <laughs> um, that's what I was just thinking about. Right. But I'm also thinking of comedy routines you could use. I mean, root canal, Thai food, or Indian. Yeah. Food. I, you know, I think, I think one thing that we talked about uh, the, at the beginning of this, which is pretty powerful, is the notion of uh, a story about where you are a secondary character in it. And, and the credibility story. And on the message of you, we have a whole video on how to create that. I highly suggest you look at it because uh, the format of it is, you know, you as an angel, it's the, the best way to sell a product or services. So I wanna also give that as an option as a speaker of uh, the people that, that you've helped. And I'm thinking, as I think about that, Lynette, and I'm, you know, working with you to write this, we might want to think of how the people you have helped or the people who said thank you and how that all, when, 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 when something's threatened, all you can think about is, you know, what did I do wrong? And, and, but I think it might be nice to present that to give people um, not just your self-doubt that's going on in your head, but um, the accolades that you've got. So it's a way to, a device that we could have to mention that to give people an idea that you're, you know, they, they're just meeting you. They don't, you know, you could be a scumbag doctor. So we want to have a moment to go, you know, of, of this person or this person, thank you, or this flowers you got or the, you know, you know the, the, the relationships you made. And that's like gone. That's gone as now you're going to take the stand in defense of your life. Okay. Right? But I think it's important to know beyond your own self doubt that stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I just, yeah it's, it's just that you, it, there's so much in these stories and which one to pick and how, as you've always talked about, to make it so that it flows from one thought to another thought without getting too disjointed so and and to say things in less words because you yeah know, well that, that's that's my job yeah <laughs> that's my job and she's and, a and, good, if i listened to her it would be great <laughs> it would be good um no but that's what karen's whole talk is nobody does this alone i mean that's why we're all meeting here karen helped you at the beginning yeah. um um you know which is providing some comic relief. And, you know, and there you go. So, Jessica, let me go to you, Jessica. How are you doing? 
She's she's muted. I got you. Okay, what's going on? Um, well, I've got some good news. I, you know, I had the CNBC thing. Yes. And um, a publisher got in touch with me, and I'm basically in the in the works with a book deal, and I got signed by a literary agent. Oh my God, so that I, is holy schmoly. And what are you? And you're and 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 you have a cold? No. I oh, just, okay. I'm sorry. Just, I, I just it's just uh, allergies. Oh, okay. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so that's I've fantastic. Been, give us the title. Give us the title of your book. Um, I don't know it uh, yet, but I know the tagline is from CIA to spiritual healer. So that's oh. what they wanted. That they, oh, wanted that. Deb they want a debut memoir, and then after that, then I can have a more prescriptive book. They want that written first, and then um, I kind of solidified a relationship with the comedy manager who I'm working on a script with, and so he wants this book to be written. And then once it's out, then we can go to networks, and then we can pitch the other stuff. So it's like uh -huh. everything's off to the races, but I was like freaking out for a while trying to write a book proposal because I have like no uh, knowledge on how to do this. And now I'm just hiring a ghostwriter, and that's what the agents want me to do. I'm just hiring a ghostwriter. From What's the agent's name? Um, Jeff Kleinman and Aaron Harris from Folio Management. Okay. So it's from Folio in New York. Um, and then after the book is written, then I could do speaking. I would love to do speaking before the book. So that's why I disappeared for a while because I was just like trying to deal with the book stuff um, and taxes. <laughs> so I was dealing with books and taxes and, and all my other projects. But um, that's where, where I'm at. And I'm filming a, a movie on Saturday. I'm part of a film when you're going to be here. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss you. Oh, that would be fun to get. Yeah, that'd be nice. Come by and say hi, have lunch or yeah. something, if you can. Um, well, that's that's wonderful. That's Thanks. really good. And and um, uh, that's. I mean, I always felt like that journey from working for the CIA to being um, a wellness is is a journey that this whole country needs to um, be on. Here. I think yeah, I think that's so such a good message for right now. Um thanks. and um and I definitely will read it, you know. Oh, thanks. I mean, um I know you helped me write and you basically wrote like an amazing pitch. So I guess when the book thing gets more solid then I can film the video or figure out what to say talking wise. So that's kind yeah. of Yeah. What was the pitch? What was the pitch that I we wrote together? You wrote, you wrote this you wrote this uh, beautiful pitch on like how my an analysis from the CIA has helped me become um, a real a good healer in New York uh, in Scott. So I think yeah. that was like the the crux of it of uh, using the same kind of analysis to trans help people transform. Well, that's fantastic. You know, it's always, you know, great to um, define your life in terms of a journey, you know, from this to this, and especially if it's an un unlikely journey, um, you know, right. uh, see where you've gotten to where you've been. And um, every one of us here has gone through some kind of journey like that. So that's, that's awesome. So uh, Karen, you're going to be in Ah, oh, New York, the 13th. Yeah. That's Monday. when I leave. That's when I leave. I'm going oh, to Spain. Monday. All right. I'm going to miss you. Okay. Anyway, Jessica, I want to I just offer you my congratulations. All right. Thank you. And please, Thank you. Um, please. Um, um, I'll email you. Yeah. Email me um, what's going on and um, and all of that. So that that is really great. Okay. Congratulations to you. Um, Okay, and uh, John Morris, you're here. John, are you in an airplane? Are you in an airplane, John? I can't hear you. Um, boy, that is not a good angle. That is not a good angle. Uh, John, hello? All right. Well, um, John submitted, um, I'm, I'm going to show what John submitted because he did submit some homework and it's probably, um, and, and, um, let me just see, uh, oh no, that's not it. That's, uh, that's Lynette. Hold on just one second. Let me find John's 
John, uh, one minute thing. All right, John has a one minute presentation. No, that's not it. That's not it. Um, I'm not sure where it is. One second. Nope, nope. All right, well, John, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Yes, yes, yes. John, did I make a mistake and this was supposed to be hours later, this Judy Jam? I thought it was, but I just I got think I of... screwed up. I think I'm going to have to do it again at 6 p.m. just to see if people are here. Anyway, what, what did you say? I said I had it on calendar for 6. But All right. I'll tell you what. I'll meet you at 6 and I'll go over your stuff because you submitted it, okay? Because I, right. I can see you on the plane. So meet me here um, at 6 Pacific time, and I'll just do this all again, okay? Very well. Okay. All right. Have a good trip wherever you're going. Okay. All right, you kids. Um, so this is going to be a short one, but uh, I think this was, this was good. Did you all get some value out of this? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah, Jessica's got a book deal. Oh, I, forgot, I, I was going to tell you about my, my TED Talk, okay? Oh, yes. and, and I think there's some lessons to be learned in this. You know, I did a TEDx talk because I went, you know what, I have a new speech. You don't get paid for TEDx's, but um, someone dropped out. They asked me, okay, I'll go do it. Um, worked like, you know, crazy, got coaching as well, added jokes, did a, a you know, 14-minute speech wrote on the power of purpose it was for high school kids adapted it to high school kids i get there for rehearsal and there's like no rehearsal i said i'm here for the sound check for the ted talk it's like an elementary school auditorium which is it's a nice stage but whatever they go oh no you don't need audio i'm going don't need audio i said this is gonna be a disaster well you could just shout i said i'm talking about thinking of killing myself, why would I shout that, right? Like, I'm going to talk about the time I called suicide hotline. I go, that's right. I want, like, what the F? I said, you know, and she says, well, there looks like there's mics there. Nobody knows how to use them. I go, all right, do you want me to help out? I know a lot about tech. So I get the mics. I open the audio board. I do everything. I'm going like, all right, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. Next thing is like, hey, how about turning on stage lights? Well, we don't know how to do it. Da 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 da. Ba ba da ba. You know, the high school kids running it are, yeah, whatever. We're doing a TEDx talk. You know, and some of these speakers have flown in from Michigan. I had to drive like an hour, and I'm already bitching about it. All right, I go. I'll do it. I'm backstage. I'm working the soundboard. You know the uh, lights I turn on the lights I go okay then they put the red circle and they put the letters like way over to the side and I said why don't you put the letters near the carpet are you planning to have like this huge wide shot You're, that's gonna be a failed thing you have to see eyes anyway so so then I see the camera at the corner of the room and I go no 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 you have to be center I tell the guy, be center here, right? And I, so I'm like working it. So I'm fourth going up, right? It's a two hour, hour and a half show. I'm in within the first 30 minutes. I get on stage. I do it. It kills. It kills. Everything worked. It went really great. And I'm going like, all worth it. I come off stage. And the cameraman is sitting at the back of the room and, there, and, he's, and he's packed up his camera. And I said, and there's an intermission? And I go, what's going on? He goes, yeah, I ran out of tape. You ran out of, I just like, I was like incredulous. And then I went, well, you know, there's four other speakers going on. Why don't you get your ass to Best Buy and pick up another sand card? You know, because people have flown out here and he does it. He misses the next speaker, but then they got the last three. What a shit show. So it just goes to show you that when you're a speaker, 
even if you're doing a TED talk, which you would think they have to be um, hit a certain criteria or a standard, no. You really which, uh, what? Which which TEDx was that? La Crescenta High School. Okay. So uh, what, in California. In California. So what you really okay. have to do is, you know, I I I thought about everything in my years of doing this that I assume that I just assume, I assume there'll be a camera. I assume they'll have enough this. I assume everything that they'll have audio and they'll have lighting. And now I will never do anything again um, without asking maybe 10 questions. What mics are you using? What camera are you using to tape it? I mean, it's a free gig. You know, I would have brought my own thing, but they usually have high quality cameras. Judy, will you send, will you send us like those questions? I want to start to understand how to take care of myself if I'm going to speak for free. Like what, what do I want to ask? What yeah, I... they're in the book, The Message of You. There's a list of them. There's a list of them, but awesome. it keeps getting more extensive. And then I keep adding them to my contract. Like, it's not a good idea to have children running around the stage while I'm speaking. Like, things you would <laughs> never even think of. Or, like, there should be seats for the audience. Oh, no, it's okay. They could just stand around and mill about. No, they can't. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a margarita machine right by the stage. Not a good idea. Every, you know, it's just like... <laughs> You know, because when you do stand up, it's usually like they know something, they know to have a mic, they know to have a mic stand, they know to have, have the people close to you and everything. But I got to tell you, in the speaking world, not so much. You always have to ask for everything. I ask for a platform. And when they say we don't, we don't want to pay extra to have a four by eight platform, I go, well, I'm not doing it because I'm short. And how am I, how am I going to have any stature to talk to people when they can't see me, when the waiters are taller than I am? So anyway, lessons learned, and you never stop learning them. All right, you guys, I'm going to go, because I got I'm going to do this again. Love you, Judy. Thank you, Thank Jessica. You. Mazel tov. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.